Today I'm going to show you a garden I've shown you very little of before. It's my favourite garden. It's where I spend most of my time. I come here at least once a day, often twice or more. It's my working garden and it's the powerhouse of the whole garden. It's where I've got my homemade greenhouses, my all-important hoarding borders, which we're going to feature today, and my coal frames. Behind me is a peony walk which is the centre point and it divides up the two different sides of the garden and it looks lovely in spring when the peonies are in full bloom and the espalier apples are there. Um, but then to the left hand side come and see this part on the left. So here I have my second greenhouse and we built this later and it's slightly sunken because it just keeps the heat better in the winter and we just have a frost free electric heater um, and at the moment you can see I've got loads of tomatoes, aubergines, peppers, I've got my propagator in there and um, it's a fabulous greenhouse. It's over 20 years old and you can see um, it's not the most um, well-maintained greenhouse but we are going to try and fix it a bit more this year. But it's given a very good service and it cost me £2,000 originally 20 plus years ago and it's produced me so much food and produce. It's it's giving me excellent value for money. So here I've got some beans coming on. So these were sown sort of mid-August about a week ago and I've got them up on this funny thing because the mice are pouring in off the grain fields um, and coming in and eating my things instead. Um, and this just stops them coming. And these are probably ready to go out now. These will be ready to go out in a couple of weeks. And I'm hoping that I'll get some more French beans before the frosts come. The beehives are behind me and then I've got various sort of little special plants here that I'm growing on. Um, so it, it's a nice, useful, sunny space. But let me show you the main part of my working garden. So this is really the centre point of it. I've got my original greenhouse. Oh, hello, Dolly, darling. So the dogs often come down when I'm here. Um, so this is the original greenhouse we built, again, from reclaimed window frames and odds and sods. This cost... Um, it was a thousand pounds, but that was probably 25 years ago. Um, but I love it. It's against the north facing wall, which everyone thinks is strange, but actually a south facing greenhouse can get so hot. Um, in recent summers, it, I really relish the fact that it is against the north facing wall. I've got my coal frame here, which I think is a really essential bit of kit for any gardener. You can just make them out of ply or wood or anything really. You can buy them off the shelf. I've got ETFE polythene on those frames and again they were old glass Dutch lights um, that were being sold off for 50p each and the glass is now broken because it's under the apple tree. What a stupid place to build a coal frame. That was my fault. Um, but the ETFE is much better because it just bounces off that. Also ETFE lets all the spectrum of light through. So the crops below taste far better and they are far less stressed than when they grow under glass. And I'm really loving it. I've got basil there and you can see there's a lot of winter lettuce just coming through and that will give me lettuce throughout the winter. Um, I've got my potting bench behind me, which has got a sink, my water butt, which is plastic, which I clad with code four lead. Um, and then these are the four main hoarding borders for the garden. Now you can see here, I've let these box go too big, propagated them on and I love them. But this winter I'm going to cut them down to the ground and then I will reshape the topi when it comes up and I'll keep it much smaller because I do need the space. So what is a hoarding border? Well, a hoarding border is, I think, essential for any gardener, even if you've only got a small garden. You can use them for when people give you plants and you want to grow them on. So instead of just having one little plant, you can propagate it up. And then when you've got six or seven, you can plant them out. And when you buy these little plug plants and they come in these tiny little containers, I usually harden them off in the greenhouse and then I plant them out. And then because this is a more protected environment and it's not in the hugger mugger of a real border in the garden where you've got all sorts of things encroaching on it, it's more protected. So you can watch it carefully. It's a bit like a nursery for children and just grow them on, make sure they're okay, give them more TLC than you would do in the border. 
and then when they reach a decent size they go out to the borders and you can see here I've got a Chilean Garber um, which I've grown um, and it has lovely pinky white flowers followed by really delicious um, pinkish red berries um, and I will I've had this has been in here for maybe for five years now and I every so often I'll dig it up and put it back because I don't want the roots going down um, really deep so I can't move it later so it's sort of basically keeping the roots in check and then I'm going to find a nice big baseless pot and put it in there or maybe give it away I've got a rose I'm not quite sure what to do with it I've propagated I've got some lovely varieties of artichoke which I got from a French market which are really good ones and then you can see I've just started to line out my box cuttings. Now these are the blight resistant box from Didier Herman. This variety is Heritage. I took, if you remember from my YouTube video last November, I took maybe a hundred odd cuttings and you can see I've lined them out there, there, there and I've just got my last row to line out. Now November is actually quite late to take something like a box cutting but September is a time, August, September, when I take masses of cuttings of yew, of box, of roses, of myrtles, um, all sorts of things. Most things will root at this time of year, the semi-hardwood cuttings. Um, and so I'm just gonna plant these out. And the reason I grow them in these trays, which is so good, is so they're in these polystyrene trays, which I inherited from my mum. Um, and I fill them with a peat half, sorry, half, compost half a vermiculite push them in there when they're on the board and pat them down quite firmly and the vermiculite holds the water the compost and, and also it promotes the drainage um, and then when they have rooted you can actually see the little roots growing out of the bottom so if you look there you can see we've got these little roots growing out of the bottom and obviously then, you know, things are starting to happen. They'll start to starve if I keep them in these trays too often. You can also see by the look of the plant, you know, it's starting to grow on. Foliage is looking a bit yellow. It needs some nutrients. It wants to get out there. So I'm lining them out in quite close rows because I'm going to probably plant them out into the garden proper in a year's time when they're nice little bushy plants. So I'll put them at something like six inch centres. And I, you just pop them out from the bottom with your finger, pull it out gently, and you can see there a nice little root ball forming on it. And then I just dig a hole. Now, usually we had masses of rain last night, so it's actually quite wet. But normally when I'm planting out in anything that's slightly dry, I tend to just water the hole massively before I plant it because I want the roots to chase the water down and to get established. And then I'll just pop it in, firm it in gently, and then water it. And normally I would do the whole row and I'd water, dig out the holes, water them, pop them in, firm them down, and then water the whole lot. And you see, I will fit the rest of this tray, most of it into there. I have filled up that bed. I've filled in the top of the pepper pots with some more box cuttings. I'm really putting them everywhere I can. So that's lovely. So this is my own mini nursery. Um, and I think if you're, if you're planting out cuttings that you've rooted, and I really think any keen gardener who hasn't got into propagation needs to, because it's just so satisfying. And you can take plants that you can't get anywhere else. Um, another reason for a hoarding border is often when I'm working on gardens, people have beds and they, they want to redesign the garden. They've got some plants they like there and a lot they don't. So we will lift out the plants that they want. We'll actually create a hoarding border in their garden. We'll move them into there. So we're saving them, ready to move into their proper place after. So it is a hoarding border. Also, if I've got gardens, I'm dealing with gardens and they're covered with bindweed and all sorts of perennial weeds. If you lift them carefully, removing the bindweed and the roots from the plant root ball, pop them in the hoarding border and then you can grow them on, make sure they're really clean. Meanwhile, clean up the bed that was full of perennial weeds using glyphosate or whatever technique you want, and then you can pop them back. Um, so I think hoarding boards are essential. 
um, I do need this extra space. But if I had a tiny garden, even, you know, one metre by two metres would be wonderful. I'd have my mini nursery and it would help me stock the garden. So they're, they're really good. Now have a look at a few of the beauties I've got growing here. So I've got some lavender, which I'm resurrecting. So I've just cut it back down and it's growing back. I've got this lovely rose, Mari Pavy, um, which flowers non-stop. It's a low growing old fashioned rose um, with beautiful white flowers and pink buds. And I've got a load of these, which I'm gonna put in the pots at the bottom of my orchard, my baseless pots. I'm gonna put three in each. Um, I've got some Sweet William, the dark purple, which I love. Um, really nice, very easy from cuttings. Um, they'll go out shortly. I've got some box, which I did in the hydropod. So I've got my hydropod and these rooted in the hydropod in about three or four weeks. Um, so I've got about, I don't know, 10, 15 of those. I've got a lovely abutilon, which has a beautiful pink flower, quite an unusual one. Um, and then I've got this myrtle. Now myrtle, is a wonderful plant. It symbolizes love, friendship, innocence, and fertility, I think. And it's been in all the royal brides' bouquets since Queen Victoria times. And I think it's actually planted at Osborne House from a cutting from one of the royal um, brides' bouquets. And I took these from cuttings from a friend's garden. Um, and if you're giving a present to someone, you know, and it's, it's symbolism, it's, it's a lovely plant to have. Um, and it's got lovely white flowers and it's evergreen and it's pretty hardy here, pretty hardy. I'll put it in a slightly sheltered place. But you see, I've grown them on in pots this time, not in the hoarding boards, because I think I will put these in big pots somewhere or give them away. So sometimes you can actually um, obviously plant your cutting straight into pots. But the reason I prefer putting them into the hoarding border is because plants naturally will go far faster in the earth, will grow faster in the earth than in a pot. They're easy to look after. Um, are you, although you see, I've got these on capillary matting, which helps with the watering. You know, the capillary matting absorbs the water and spreads it more evenly. So when you pull a root, a plant out of a pot, on capillary matting or find the roots distributed nice and evenly through the compost not just wrapping around the edges and zooming to the bottom so the growth is much better um, so so those are a few little plants I've got here but in the greenhouse you can see I've got a whole load more come and have a look so September is a busy time August September in the greenhouse so here are a lot more cuttings going on a lovely little pelagonium some more plants for the rose meadow, meadow a persicaria, um, more roses, um, a beautiful plumbago, um, which everybody loves when they come here. So I have to take lots of plumbago cuttings so I can give them to them when they come. I've got some vines, some flocks. I've got a few monkey old tomatoes at the end of the season. I've got lots of veg I've sown here for the veg garden. Spinach I've got, um, fennel I've got, chicory, basil, all sorts of things that will keep me going through the autumn and most of the winter, hopefully. I've got some cucumbers left. And my main tomatoes are in the other greenhouse. And although they look really manky, I will go on picking tomatoes until Christmas time. I hate buying tomatoes. They never taste as good. And I find even in my unheated greenhouses, they will keep on producing a few tomatoes until Christmas. And it's so nice to have your fresh tomatoes for a good six months of the year. So if you haven't got a hoarding border, make one. It doesn't have to be raised. It can just be a designated patch of ground in your garden and maybe have your whole little working garden together um, in a place with maybe a coal frame. If you're lucky, a greenhouse, a potting bench, a water butt. So you've got everything you need to, to um, have to hand together in one place. And then when it's a miserable day, it's I love coming down here and potting around and growing things on, potting them on, tending them. And it's just so satisfying to have your own mini nursery.